If Japan didn't have its hands full with one melted down nuclear plant, well, actually six, at Fukushima, it certainly does now with another nuclear power plant on the verge of melting down. About 300 miles southwest of Fukushima sits the Manju nuclear reactor, a prototype fast breeder reactor filled to the brim with plutonium, the deadliest element on the face of the earth. And last year, a three-ton device of some sort fell into the Manju reactor, blocking access to the nuclear fuel rods in the reactor core, and despite several attempts, has yet to be recovered. Another attempt will be made next week to clear this three-ton object from the reactor, but critics caution that the procedure is extremely dangerous and can trigger, could trigger an explosion in the nuclear fuel rods. One ominous sign of just how dangerous the situation is, a top manager at the plant just recently committed suicide. Think of the damaged Manju plant as a nuclear bomb just waiting to go off. It could take out the city of Kyoto, which is just 60 miles from the plant. It has a population of one and a half million people. And Japan's largest city, Tokyo, is downwind from the crippled Manju plant. So what does all this mean? And what's the latest with the two nuclear plants right here in the United States that are in danger in Nebraska? Here to offer some answers is Kevin Camps, nuclear waste watchdog at Beyond Nuclear. Kevin, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me, Tom. First of all, fast breeder reactor. What's that? This is well, the one Manju in Japan. It's an experimental reactor that's actually designed to generate plutonium, which would then be extracted from the high-level radioactive waste and then used as reactor fuel. So it's, uh, it's an experiment. It's a grand experiment. We had one at uh, Fermi Unit 1 near Detroit, and the famous book is called We Almost Lost Detroit. They had a partial meltdown in 1966. Yeah, I was going to say I remember that, uh, I remember that book. The uh, normal nuclear power plants, they're basically just giant furnaces, and they heat water, and the water turns a turbine, and it's basically a steam operation. You can take the nuclear plant out and stick in a coal uh, fire or a gas fire and pretty much do the same thing. Uh, but I understand that this fast breeder reactor is not, is not heating water. It's using sodium? That's a part of the danger. Sodium is intensely liquid reactive sodium? with water or air. It's liquid sodium, liquid metal, and so on contact with water or air, it could explode or catch on fire. So it's a very risky reactor design. They've had fires at Manju. They had a bad fire in 1995. Wow. It's been largely shut down ever since. And the danger of this procedure, it's so unnecessary. They could just shut the reactor down, not try to extract this thing. It's in the extraction of this 3.3 ton weight that they could set the dominoes falling that could lead to a disaster. Radioactivity what, what is this three and a half ton thing that I didn't know what it was? Do you, to be honest, I don't know. It's a new issue saying? to me. So they, they, they are like saying something that I, fell in there and yeah okay so it, it plays a role in the reactor and I'm not sure what it is but it weighs 3.3 tons they don't need to remove it but they want to operate this thing this uh, Manju experiment is 20 years old it's cost 12 billion dollars and a part of it is suppo it's supposed to generate electricity for society it's generated electricity for one hour in those 20 years whoa wow isn't, isn't one of the uh, other reasons why countries b build fast breeder reactors because they can uh, create plutonium that they can use for nuclear weapons? Well, any country that has a plutonium supply extracted, especially weapons usable, could put it into weapons. And there are a number of countries that do have fast breeder reactors. They're called plutonium breeder reactors. Russia is one. Any country that decides to use the plutonium for weapons could do so. Yeah, that's remarkable. Turning our attention to the United States, we have two nuclear plants here that we've talked about several times, or I've talked about several times on the air, in uh, Nebraska that are within a few feet of water levels swamping them out, which is basically what happened in Fukushima. The water swamped out the, the diesel generators that were providing the backup and power. And the, without, oddly enough, you would, it, it sounds crazy, but a nuclear power electrics, electricity generating station has to have electricity coming to it or it can melt down. And what's, what's the deal with the ones in Nebraska right now? Well, the Fort Calhoun nuclear power plant, which is north of Omaha, is the one getting most of the news coverage right now. It looks like a nuclear lake with the vital areas of the plant in the middle, surrounded by an eight-foot tall uh, rubber wall that's filled with water, sort of the last line of defense for this nuclear power plant. Wow. And the other one is the Cooper nuclear power plant, which is south of Omaha. 
And it is a twin to the Fukushima Daiichi units one through four. It's a general electric boiling water reactor of the Mark I design. Cal for Calhoun is a pressurized water reactor. So yes, if you were to lose the electrical grid and the emergency diesel generators, it would plunge these reactors into a station blackout. They only have four hours of battery as opposed to uh, Fukushima, which had eight hours of battery. Hopefully they will keep the grid going out there. Hopefully the emergency diesels are ready to go. But just last year, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission cited uh, Fort Calhoun for being unprepared for a flood. They gave them a yellow finding, which is the second highest Another violation. Of flood. Fortunately, the NRC caught it and enforced their regulations last year, or we could be in much higher. Or they wouldn't have the rubber dam around it right now or something like that? Perhaps so. Uh, the devil's in the details. Luckily, yeah. they enforced that regulation. Today, we were looking at the NRC site, nrc.gov, and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. And way buried deep down inside is like the daily incident report. I didn't even know about this. Somebody called into my radio show today and said, you've got to see this thing. Right. And just yesterday, I mean, in just in the last 24 hours, um, the Millstone in Connecticut, the Columbia Generating Station in, was in Washington, Limerick in Pennsylvania, and Perry in Ohio all had incidents. Uh, do you know anything more about those? And what's the deal? What's going on here with these? This is a daily occurrence. If you visit this page at the NRC website every day, you will see there will be a few or many incidents all over the country, some more serious than I mean, others. One of them was a complete shutdown of their, of their cooling system. Yes, and there was another one that was a loss of communications, a loss of ability to run computers that would be needed in an emergency. And this does go on all the time. There are literally millions of moving parts in nuclear power plants that many times have to work, especially during an emergency, and sometimes these systems are down. One of the worst cases that comes to mind is a 20-year lack of emergency diesel generators at the Fermi 2 nuclear power plant in Michigan, the largest Fukushima-style design in the world. 20 years without emergency diesel generators. So if that, if that one got knocked, if a, if a tornado went through Michigan, yeah. I grew up in Michigan, we, we had tornadoes all the time. Tornado went through, ripped up the high tension lines coming into the plant, that plant could melt down. They discovered the problem in 2006 and just a few years later they did have a tornado at Fermi. So fortunately they had caught the problem before they needed their emergency diesels. A lot of times it's sheer luck that... We almost lost Detroit twice. Exactly. 75% of U.S. plants have leaked radiation in the United States. Is that true, that statistic that I've seen? And if so, uh, why, why are we... I mean, what kind of insanity are we pursuing here? Well, the leaks are epidemic as the plants age. The underground pipes especially uh, corrode and then fail. You've got massive tritium leaks at places like Braidwood in Illinois. But actually, 102 reactors in this country have leaked radioactivity into the environment in one way or another. And then there's the routine releases. The NRC permits releases of radioactivity on a daily basis from nuclear power plants into the air, into the water, as long as it's below a certain concentration. Tritium is a case in point. We have these tritium leaks into groundwater, but where is it leaking from? It's leaking from pipes and systems designed to dump it in the river with permission. Um, amazing. And, and just to put a final punctuation point on this, there is no such thing as a safe level of radiation. No, the National Academy of Science has reported for decades that any exposure to radioactivity carries a risk. The higher the exposure, the higher the risk, and these risks accumulate there is no zero over pressure. a lifetime. Kevin, thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. As two nuclear power plants in Nebraska are at risk from rising floodwaters, the Associated Press just released a new report about the cozy relationship between nuclear power plant operators and government regulators. According to the report, in order to keep aging nuclear plants open, the NRC often eases regulations for plant operators and overlooks potential problems. That includes letting leaks or cracks in the reactors slide by even though they pose a real risk. As equipment fell into disrepair and no longer satisfied safety standards, the NRC would actually lower the standards so that the plants could remain open. Because of this lax oversight, the report noted that 75% of all U.S. nuclear power plants have leaked radioactive substances. The corporate capture of government regulators has officially spread to the nuclear industry, the most dangerous of all industries in America. We saw what corporate capture of oil drilling watchdogs did to the Gulf of Mexico with the BP disaster and with coal and the Massey Mine disaster. Sadly, it may only be a matter of time before we learn the same lesson with our very own Fukushima. Oh, and now for something completely different.
Tokyo Electric Power Company has begun adding boric acid to the spent fuel storage pool of the number three reactor at its Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant to prevent fuel wax from being corroded by alkaline water. The company started the operation on Sunday morning. About 90 tons of water containing boric acid will be poured into the pool through Monday. Concrete debris from the March hydrogen explosion of the reactor building has been detected in the fuel pool. Last month, TEPCO found that the water in the pool had turned strongly alkaline, with its pH level reaching 11.2. The leaching of calcium hydrate from the debris is believed to be the cause. TEPCO says the condition may accelerate corrosion of aluminium racks holding spent fuel rods and, in the worst case, may cause the rods to topple over, which could lead to re-criticality. TEPCO says the condition may accelerate corrosion of aluminium racks holding spent fuel rods and, in the worst case, may cause the rods to topple over, which could lead to re-criticality. The operator of the troubled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says it plans to resume operation of a system to decontaminate highly radioactive water and recycle it to cool the reactors as early as Monday. Contaminated water is still accumulating in the plant from the constant stream being injected into it to cool the reactors. Tokyo Electric Power Company has been forced to suspend test runs of the system a number of times due to problems with a device that removes radioactive substances. But the utility says it managed to resolve the problem by using a different absorbent material for the device. The company says 600 tons of contaminated water was cleaned in the test runs and it says this water will be used to cool the reactors as early as Monday afternoon. If the operation is successful, the company would not need to inject new water into the reactors and would be able to prevent the plant from generating highly contaminated water. Health checkups for over 2 million residents of Fukushima Prefecture will start on Monday. The prefectural government will first check about 28,000 residents of Itate village and the towns of Kawamata and Namie, all near the troubled Fukushima Daiichi plant. People will be asked about their lifestyle after the March 11th disasters. Their external radiation exposure will then be estimated by matching their activities to data about radiation levels in the atmosphere and on the ground. A medical device called a whole body counter will be used to measure the internal radiation levels of more than 2,900 people. On Monday, the first 10 people are scheduled to be taken to the National Institute of Radiological Sciences near Tokyo for detailed tests. The Fukushima Prefectural Government intends to analyze the results. Ah, you perfect rat! Look what you've done! All right, everybody, it's Sunday, June 26, 2011, and I just found this breaking news. They say uh, Fort Calhoun Nuclear Station, the flood berm has collapsed. Collapsed, all right. Let's see. It's in Omaha, Nebraska. A berm holding back flow water at the Nebraska Nuclear Power Plant has collapsed. The U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission says the 2,000-foot berm at the Fort Nuclear... Fort Calhoun Nuclear Station collapsed at about 1.30 a.m. Sunday. All right, people, now they say there is no danger. There is no danger. The plant has been shut down since early April for refueling, and the commission says there's no water inside, I'm sure. Also, the Missouri River is expected to rise past the flood level the plant was designed to handle. All right. The NRC says its inspectors were at the plant when the berm failed and have confirmed that the flooding has had no impact on the reactor shutdown cooling. Victor Drick says the plant remains safe. I'm sure it does. All right, people, y'all let me know what y'all think about this.